This was a video that I was waiting to do later this year, some point after September 19th in fact. But unfortunately uh, we received the news yesterday that this year's Dundee Pride event has been cancelled. Quite sad news but with everything that's going on in the world we are seeing a tremendous amount of public events being cancelled. The Edinburgh festivals, uh, the local Dundee Flower and Food Festival, um, many different events, Westfest, just so many public events are being cancelled and I unfortunately I kind of expected it to be cancelled but I want to do this video anyway. Before I talk about what attracted me to attend the two Dundee Pride events that have happened so far in 2018 and 2019, I want to talk quickly about the setup to these events. It's a very simple setup, it's very similar to other festivals, prides, and similar street events that are held. Basically, there is obviously a meeting point where individuals, families, groups, associations and even representatives officially of different companies will gather. They will then parade through the streets of the city centre and it leads them to a main uh, staging area, a public area, where there are stalls offering different support and advice, there are food stalls and also there is a main stage for speeches and performances. So what attracted me to attend the two Dundee Pride events that have been held so far? Well, even though I've kind of titled this slightly, um, and kind of slightly as a heterosexual guy, and I'll talk about that at the end, it's more the photographer side of me that actually was attracted to go to these events and photograph them. Because I continue to have seen, for many years of course, other pride events, street festivals, carnivals, such as Rio de Janeiro and London, and, you know, real big public events such as these and continue to see really colourful, bright and excited images and video of such event and that's what I wanted to capture. I wanted to capture photos of a colourful event whether it be and maybe okay I'm thinking slightly stereotypically now but there, is, uh, as you'll see in some pictures across this video, there have been some people. But I was thinking more, some hopefully people will be wearing slightly what is sometimes referred to as outrageous outfits, accessories, uh, obviously a very, lot of colourful signs and banners will be being held as well with various different messages. So that's what I was looking to capture the fun, excitement and colourfulness of such an event. In terms of what's going on and what I actually do at these events, obviously with the photos, I'm obviously a hobbyist photographer and so I'm basically a, 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 just a, someone who is going down there to witness it and attend there with a camera. I'm just somebody who is going down there with a camera to take what images I can. And that kind of comes down to what I talked about earlier, the route. And normally, these, well, certainly the last two years, the parade has kicked off around about midday, um, which caused a little slight problem, um, which I'll get to for me last year. But when you go down, especially as a photographer, you want to know in these kind of events what is going on, if possible, the schedule, where things will be, of course, and what is happening. Now, on social media, hopefully there is, like the Dundee Pride Facebook page, a place where they will print or publish the, uh, the route of the parade, maybe a day or so, even a couple of days, however, however long, before the event. And I'm able to look at that and pick out places that I could potentially stand 
or place myself and take some images, take photos, use my camera. And so last year I picked out a couple of places. First of all, Reform Street. That is the street that uh, was just along from the Overgate Shopping Centre. It's just going off the city square uh, where the obviously the parade walks up uh, on the roads throughout their parade. And so I thought that would be a perfect place to capture the uh, parade. Now, as a as someone obviously who is local to Dundee, I'll say I live here, born here, bred here. I knew that. I, well, I even I, I scoured it even just like a half an hour before I, 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 I checked it out because sometimes you get crowd barriers and such at these types of events. There hasn't been at the Dundee Pride so far, which is great. And I was able to select myself a slightly elevated position. It's very, very slightly elevated on a bit of a curb, uh, a, a lamppost. And so I stood there and took photos as the parade was going past. In those kind of situations, if you're just an onlooker, you're just somebody there, a hobbyist, obviously not officially associated with the events, you just have to try and compose your images as best you can as the parade passes you by. There may be some times you think, oh, this person would look good next to this person with their different outfits. However, in those situations, you do not really have the power to say, oh, well, could so, uh, person A stand next to person B, um, you know, to take a photograph. Obviously, you do not have the power to do that. Perhaps if you get the chance, if it turns out they know each other or they're standing next to each other, maybe at the main staging area or what Dundee Pride actually calls the Pride Village uh, section of the day, then maybe you can do that. Maybe they will, you know, they'll actually um, acquiesce to your request. Maybe they'll meet, your, you know, they'll do it for you. Some people will think you're media and obviously you cannot tell them that you are media when you're not. Uh, but, you know, so, so you've got limited powers, but you just have to compose as people are going past. Something that I will say also about uh, that I said, I picked out a couple of places. The first year, 2018, there wasn't a huge long route and by the, really by the time that um, the route went around the, care, uh, around the city square area and back into there, I didn't really have an opportunity to really move position. Uh, but last year I did because it was a slightly elongated route, like I said, up Reform Street past the McManus Galleries, down the streets there to Castle Street and across to Slessor Gardens, which is actually where this uh, Pride Village was. And so I was able to move to Castle Street and actually moved to the other side of the street as well. Uh, so because I noticed, right, well, I'm, you know, certain persons that I recognised were, uh, you know, had gone past me and literally standing, you know, well, walking right uh, in front of me. I'm not going to, I do not want to take the same images of those people, so I'm going to move to the other side where I can take images of those individuals who I had not maybe seen properly or able to take a photograph properly because they'd been slightly obscured out of view. And so that's what I did. I went down to Castle Street, moved to the other side of the street, and uh, I did take some images there because thankfully they were letting some traffic flow then stopping some traffic to allow more uh, revellers to cross into Slessor Gardens area and then letting some more traffic flow again. So there was a little bit of pausing down Castle Street and of the parade. So that allowed me to have the opportunity to take some more images of them at standstill, which is sometimes quite helpful. What I will talk about quickly before I talk about the main staging area and the performances and then start to wrap this up. There may be people who are shy of your camera. Again, as I said, you really cannot claim that you're media when you're not. And on, uh, I, I would certainly advise against that. A lot of people will um, think you're media. Uh, but some people will just see you as somebody with a camera. And last year, there was at least about four people wandering about with a camera, myself included. I know one individual, one gentleman was indeed officially with the Pride Festival because he was in front of us in the kind of, um, I don't know what you call it, but the 
in, the, in front of the crowd barrier, in front of the stage, that kind of press pit kind of suppose, I suppose, um, where, uh, where when the performances were on, and I saw a couple other people wandering about with the camera. Um, now, some people may actually kind of hide away from your camera, and obviously, especially if you have that, like I did last year, with a couple of people, certainly one individual, they very much shied away from my camera immediately as soon as they saw it, and I immediately got the understanding they don't want their picture taken. Okay, and I move on, look to other things, you know, move my camera around away from them, away from them in my view at least. You just got to understand that. Some people, however, will play up to the camera, whether they think you're media or not. Some people will actually. Um, smile for the camera, wave for the camera, pose even. The one lady who certainly was playing, very much playing up for the camera last year. Uh, some people will do that, so I said some people won't. But if you do get that, even if it's not an image you think you're after, then perhaps just take it, pretend to take it. It's up to yourself as long as you have plenty of memory cards on you, batteries, etc., to keep you going. Uh, you know, uh, which I think these days in digital photography. It's so so simple. It really is. Um, not that memory cards are absolutely, uh, you know, very 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 cheap. You can get very cheap ones, which claim to have large storage. Uh, I might check one out in the future. But uh, you you can pretend take the image or take the image that if you want, and then look at it later. You know, and once you go into editing mode, then you can either look at it and think, "Yep, I don't want it," and delete it, or uh, just st once you start editing it, you may actually like that image. But again, you may you'll get some people shy away from your camera. Some people will embrace it, and uh, you know some people th maybe think you're media because a lot of people like to see themselves in media online in some sort of coverage of the event. Um, and even if you're just doing like a YouTube, like I do, um, then you can even you could just direct them to that. Even if you, if, if there is any questions or. Um, you know, if you want to do that, you can say, oh, well, check out, this is the name of my channel, X, Y, Z, check it out, I'll put the video up, uh, etc. Or, you know, anyway. So some people will shy away, some people will play up to the camera, and again, it's up to you. Uh, whether you want to take the image and then just delete it or not take the image and just, you know, just press your finger on the shutter button like you're taking it and say thank you very much and move on. Again, keep being polite. I think I find that works. I'm quite a polite person anyway, but um, sometimes, especially in a public situation like that, it's maybe best to. So I do want to quickly talk about the public area, the Pride Village, the main staging area, call it what you will. I will refer to it as Pride Village for the next few minutes. Uh, the performances. What I've done the last two years is to concentrate actually on the performances. Like I said, they're food stalls. There are different stalls offering advice, support, different companies advertising their services um, to the LGBTQ uh, community. Obviously, it's a big celebration of uh, the LGBTQ community. Um, so, I haven't really gone, which I'm going to do um, the next year, unfortunately, it's going to have to be, um, take pictures of that kind of area. What I have done in the last two years is really concentrate on taking images of the speeches and the performers. I, I don't know how it works in other Pride events, certainly for the Dundee Pride the last two years, which has been actually really good to see. Many of the performers have been local talents. Some you may hear about, uh, know about in your area. Some you may not. It may be a singer that you hear, that you know about, or even maybe just due to the simply, uh, to the publicity um, that, the event has you may hear about you know individuals um, whether they be singers, drag acts, a comedy troupe doing a um, uh, kind of performance uh, to uh, a famous Queen song. You know whatever it is, you may actually hear about them prior to the event. You may not know who they are, not seen their act, but the, there, there certainly has been local performers uh, for the last couple of years at the Dundee Pride event. And this is where I will say, again, like just the rest of it, use the capabilities of your camera. I always try and continually say this nowadays. 
uh, if I'm talking photography, use the capabilities of your camera. If you have a good camera like my Sony a7 III that I'm recording this on, use those capabilities. It's a very, quite a rapid um, paced camera in terms of the ability to take many photos in the high plus drive mode very quickly. I think it's 10 frames per second uh, is the, like, the technical specifications. In these kind of situations, use the, your camera, use whatever lenses you want. It's entirely up to you to get the photos. If you want, I, I mean, I'm not a fan of bl motion blur, to be honest, uh, partly because I've struggled with, you know, uh, pre point and shoot cameras that I've used um, to take photos of the wrestling, of local wrestling events, and um, you know, it just makes some of the photos look horrible when it comes to sports. Uh, in my opinion, but some of them have been they're really, really blurred and pretty much useless. So that's maybe part of the reason why, but it's up to each individual how they want to set their camera up, whether they want to introduce a little bit of motion blur to show that the people are moving or whatever. That's entirely up to uh, each individual. But I concentrated on the performances these last couple of years, and I, do, uh, I did want this year to concentrate on people milling about, having a good time, taking more images, of people um, actually enjoying um, the event and what else it has to offer. But unfortunately, as I said, that will have to wait, unfortunately, until next year. So before I wrap this up, the Dundee Pride events, I, it's been a lot of fun. I'm not a sociable person by any means. A lot of people who know me will know that. Uh, I was able to relax a little bit more last year. Um, I did have... Uh, you know, I have... Like I said, I, I'm not trying to claim any type of moral high ground whatsoever. I'm not you know, the person to do that. But I have a slightly more of an open mind than some. And I will say that some people did re register their objections on social media to such an event taking place, especially when the first one was announced to be happening in 2018. However, I think the overwhelming majority of Dundonians have embraced such an event uh, it's been more than welcomed. Many, many different companies have genuinely sent official representation at these Dundee Pride events, legitimately from supermarkets to the Royal Mail to uh, various different companies. Literally, they've made statements to this effect. These uh, Many of these companies have said we're sending representatives uh, and they've said it in the local media, so I'm not just saying that. Uh, I think it's been, you know, Dundee is quite a progressive city I would like to think anyway um, and I and there's never been really any trouble either it's, you know, the atmosphere of this um, the Dundee Pride has been fun people have been there to enjoy themselves and have a good time um, which has been really really good to see that's the kind of atmosphere you want people there um, and you know, to ha genuinely have a good time and enjoy themselves in a good in, in a, and I'm sure I believe there is you know, like alcohol being, I think alcohol being served at these type of events, but apparently, um, don't quote me on that because I'm not entirely sure. Because obviously, I do not drink myself, so I didn't seek it out. But I uh, said a lot of water was being provided, water bottles, etc. And it's one of the stalls that was uh, on uh, last year. But uh, you know, people were there to enjoy themselves and have fun. Uh, and that so it was looked like a good atmosphere. I never ever saw any reports of any trouble before anybody, uh, you know, says anything like that. No reports at all that I heard or saw in the local media about any trouble. And so people would seem to be there deliberately to enjoy themselves. I unfortunately wasn't able to stay for the entire uh, afternoon of uh, performances both years. Unfortunately. Just the way it fell, uh, that something I had something on those both those days, which was slightly frustrating. Um, uh, thing was that one uh, certainly I think it was both family things that, that I had to come back for, but uh, certainly it, I enjoyed going down. Like I said, I'm more of an open mind than some people, but I really enjoyed it. Again, not social butterfly by any means, but I was able to relax, enjoy. The performances, the some of the comedy, the drag acts, the singers, uh, you know, of course some of the speeches. I won't go into the speeches, but just local dignitaries, um, you know, making speeches, representatives, um, obviously with the positive messages, which are good to see. And it was really a quite a welcoming atmosphere. Uh, before I go, you know, there was never any. There should not be these type of events because 
It was never, oh, well, who are you? What do I, you identify with? Or yada, yada. No, none of any of that kind of stuff, which there shouldn't really be. Whether you're, I believe it's called an ally, a supporter, or just somebody interested in checking out the event, or whatever it is, whatever reason you have to go down there, open positively, um, because obviously they would put up with any, be there for a real negative way, when, obviously, which, to be honest about it, if there, is, if there was somebody to attend such an event, um, and deliberately try and cause anything, obviously the police and that would be called, I'm sure, and be taken care of, but uh, not that it's ever happened at the Dundee Price, but certainly it's been a very welcome that for now nobody goes around asking, you know, who are you, blah, 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 what, you know, what do you identify as, or whatever. I mean, seemingly, from what I've witnessed, again, not speaking to many people, do concentrate on the photography, um, it's been certainly be a very welcoming atmosphere, and as, as I said, people uh, seem intent on in being there, um, as a celebration of the LGBTQ community and have fun and have a good time. So I've actually enjoyed these last two Dundee Pride events. Yeah, I am disappointed, as I said, that you know these that this year's has been cancelled. Um, it's such a shame. I was hoping, like I said, to vary the photography because if these kind of events, I uh, should said, these kind of events have a similar or same kind of setup, you need to vary your photography otherwise you start coming away with very similar images year on year and that's what I was kind of hoping to avoid this year so it's a great shame that this uh, event has been cancelled for this year hopefully we will see a very successful Dundee Pride 2021 uh, when all of this stuff is over uh, when we can get back to normal say and uh, they can, I'm sure they'll put on a good event so I really enjoyed the Dundee Pride events glad that such events public events are happening in Dundee not just for the photography side of it but obviously for all the social kind of stuff about it but I've enjoyed Dundee Pride sad that it's not happening this year but hopefully it'll be a very successful event next year <laughs>